guys, it's showtime once again. Showtime Shred of Fitness over here. Size, growth, get big, all right. So here's people I admire, okay? People who actually are willing to die for their beliefs. I mean, I'm not saying you have to go there, right? We don't want to fucking die for our beliefs, right? Even if that means, you know, family and friends and future generations benefiting from it, right? You know, but if you look at it, you just got to make sure you have the right beliefs, okay? It would really suck to freaking, you know, I really believe in this, da, 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 die for it, then fucking, you know, you, you're caught in the afterlife, whether it be, you know, heaven, hell, or in between, or purgatory, or whatever, and then you look back at everything and go, God dang, that was a mistake, I believed the wrong thing. It's possible, you know, but, you know, that's part of life too, right? You know, you're not always going to make the right decisions. Maybe your belief will change over the years, and that's okay, you know, um, as long as you don't, you know, screw people in the process. You know, like for me, if I jump ship on a certain belief, you know, I'm on a certain team, I'm not just going to go fly midway through and go and start snitching on people and giving up them. People can't trust you, right? So, I would fucking renunci renunciate. I would fucking retire from that organization, okay? And then I would either just go do my own thing and just be a, you know, free spirit or whatever, or, or a hard collar, you know, blue collar worker, whatever, business owner, whatever. Basically, my main thing is lifting weights, right? And as long as I'm lifting weights and, and eating and competing and helping other people with their fitness goals, that's pretty much the main thing. I'm not, I don't really have political and religious and spiritual goals right now, other than just treat people the way I want to be treated, help people along the way, and whatever that means, because sometimes you have an idea of how you want to help people, like obvious for reasons, I want to help people with health and fitness, right? I've been doing that my whole life, but sometimes you help people for something you're not even planning on doing, right? Somebody gets a flat tire, you help them, uh, you give somebody a ride out of gas, you know, help people do yard work, um, help people clean the house or whatever when they're um, not able to do so. Sometimes there's little things along the way that you do as a favor for somebody else you weren't planning on doing. Okay, helping people is helping people. If it's for the greater good of the of society or just it just is something you, you just do just because you're not even thinking about it. It's just who you are, it's your friend, it's your family member, it's a stranger maybe even, but they need your help and you know, you're not in any danger that you know of doing it, and you feel safe doing it, then go for it, right? Uh, keep keep in mind, you know, certain acts of of uh, of patriotic kindness and good Samaritanism. Uh, be careful, okay? Uh, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. I'm not gonna tell you not to do it. But with with uh, with extreme caution, right? Shit, I, I remember one time I got fucking lucky, right? Um, I'm driving. Um, I believe it was to a bodybuilding competition. No, no, that time it wasn't even bodybuilding competition because I had a bought an 800 calorie drink. I was fired up about it. And uh, I was not even a quarter of the way through it. And uh, I also bought a, uh, a protein bar, right? And boom, I'm headed just to, just to chill, right? I'm going to school in Ellensburg. I'm headed towards Seattle, Washington. Um, I was going to kind of walk around down there, Pike's Buck and stuff, right? So there's a bum on the street, right? And uh, he's got a big bag. He looked like he'd been there a while and everything. I was like, man... This poor motherfucker, right? And so, I pull over. I'm like, where are you going? You know, I'm going to going to Seattle. So, I, if you're going anywhere else, I can drop you off somewhere along the way, along the way. Or if you are going as far as Seattle, then I'll take you all the way there. And so, he could only go a certain amount. And I would have had to drop him off. And he gets in. And he sits in the front seat with me. He's in the fucking back, right? I'm like, oh, this is fucking great. Right? He looked very pretty innocent. You know that guy with the... But he looked kind of shady. You know that guy on, um, what do you call it, uh, with Adam Sandler, that guy with the beard, where they give, brought him right off the street, had him be his caddy, remember that guy, the big beard and everything, all grungy looking, okay, that's exactly what this guy looked like, right, so, and his eyes were like this, I'm like, oh, all right, he looks like he might be on the mental institution, you know, this guy's gonna be very interesting, you know, so fascinating by the guy, but I'm also, I'm also got my safety and security cap on, right, because I went to the military and all this stuff, and, uh, and did a little bit of martial arts, so I'm thinking, you know, best case scenario, worst case scenario, you know, I'm just 
you know, shoot the shit with this guy. I'm not threatened by him yet. He's not trying to throw a line around my neck or anything, but I'm, I've got the rearview mirror out. I'm looking, right? I'm not, not taking anything for granted. I'm watching the road. I'm watching him. Watching the road. Watching him. So if he does anything funny, you know, and uh, if he does do something with a with gun, great. You know, you won't take the car, go walk, you have the car, right? Because um, I can't defend myself back here. That was a mistake. I should have had him sit here, but I didn't do that. Um, so with a gun, he would have won, right? But aside from that, I'm going to let him do nothing else. And I can still fight enough to pull over and still fight back, okay? The only thing he's got an advantage with is a gun, or if he's, you know, trying to stab me from the back. There's still some shit I can, can try to do, right? Um, knife defense and... And just try, trying to square up with them while not crashing the car at the same time. That's a problem because the car is going this way. The confluence is back here, right? So I got to try to get a whole new twist just enough to pull over and get that thing loose straight. Um, gun's a little bit hotter. Okay, you don't do it right. You shoot you in the head. You're dead. But the nice thing about that is it's a, it's a quick, it's just a done deal. You know, the way I look at it is that's the case and that's such a quick thing. If that's the way God wants me to go out and helping somebody... Well, when you're done, who's to say if I keep going and leave him that I don't get in a car crash up the road and bleed out and die that way, right? So if it's your time, it's your time, right? So what I look at is I ain't going to let this fucking guy tie me up and torture me for days at a time, right? I'm going to make it so I win the fight or he's going to have to put a bullet in me, okay? And I'd already kind of reviewed him unless he gets into his bag and grabs a gun. It didn't, didn't look like he had it, like, really close. He was like, he had to reach in and grab. Gives me some time. Okay, I'm thinking of all this stuff, right? But he's a really nice guy. He's, he's been real quiet. He's got to stare the whole time. Look around. So I'm like, all right, you know, that's cool. So I'm like, he's probably fucking hungry. He's probably been here for where? I've only been, like, not even halfway done with my bar. I'm like, you want a protein bar? He's like, he eats it. I was like, I got a drink here, too. You want a drink? So I'm glad I gave it to him because he's fucking hungry and thirsty, you know, poor guy. So we fucking pull in and uh, to this rescue area type way. This is as far as he needed to go. And it was uh, it was about halfway. So a good hour or two with this guy, right? And uh, not just had a qualm about me. I didn't feel any kind of... Sometimes you get a, a gut feeling about somebody, right? Like, this doesn't feel right. This feels wrong. This guy's dangerous. Um, I still have my alert on, you know, uh, my security alert, but I wasn't feeling threatened by this dude at all. It's totally cool. And, uh, but I was still ready for best and worst case scenario, fair enough. So we pull over to this fucking little Sherry's, and especially seeing how hungry and thirsty he was, and then I'm, the more things go on, it's just like, the more at ease I'm feeling. It's like, he wanted to do something to me, he'd have fucking done it already, right? He's, he's, he's behind me, okay? He's, uh, he ain't pulling nothing yet. He's accepting gifts. You know, he ain't worried about me poisoning him, obviously. So the less he's suspicious of me, the less suspicious I am of him, fair enough. Because I was already a bigger guy. And, uh, didn't appear to have any weapons on him, but you can't fucking tell, right? Big ass sea bag and fucking just looking all like he could have had it on. He, he's something in, in his, uh, in his coat pocket or his bag or whatever. You know, he may have been armed. It doesn't matter, though. You know, it is what it is. And so, we pull over, and I'm fucking... And I, I gotta pee real bad, too, so I'm kind of in a hurry, and phew, I shut the door, locked it, and I'm going, because I always go, keys, where And I go, where's my keys? I got my wallet, where's my... Fuck, he's fucking left my car keys in the fucking ignition. God damn. I'm so pissed off to... Me. <sighs> he didn't lock his door, so he goes... He, this guy doesn't even fucking talk. He's like really quiet, like the guy on fucking, uh, not Forrest Gump, uh, that movie with Adam Sandler, where he's a fucking golfer. I can't remember the name of it anymore, but uh, I had 10 Kraton pills because I, I had a toothache that I haven't had since I had it really, really bad for a few days when I was working at Nice one for like seven days and I just went away. It was really weird. I ain't been two or three days, it went away. But today and yesterday has been kind of flaring up. So I had 10 of those. Um, no issues. Remember the last time I'd taken it last year, fucking was getting, you know, I was getting that uh, around Thanksgiving or something. So not even that, it's like six months ago. Um, but uh, I got, I remember I took 20, I got really sick. Then I took 10, I got really sick. So I was like, fuck, 
what I take 10 for, but took 10 today, no issues. And uh, the sweating's not from that, it's from this fucking hot ass fucking uh, the air conditioner doesn't work, so that kind of sucks. So the whole house is hot. And uh, anyways, make a long story short. So this guy, he fucking opens up his door, he opens up my door, grabs the keys, hands me the keys, almost does like a bow, he just fucking just doesn't talk. So it's fine with me, right? So I went to, took a piss, I come back out, I hand him like, I don't remember if it was five dollars or twenty dollars, but I handed him some money. I said, "Here's some money if you want to get like some coffee or something." It was nice meeting you. Thanks for fucking saving my door. You saved me at least fifty dollars, and have a great day. I went fucking to Seattle, walked around a little bit, box market, all that stuff. I was single at the time, so I think I went to the nudie bar for a few minutes and uh, got bored there. Um, I did end up. Uh, there was a gal that came and approached me. She's a good-looking Asian gal, and she was talking to me a little bit and gave me her phone number, told me to call her. I didn't think nothing of it. I thought, just trying to get your right business or whatever. So we dated for a couple, two, three weeks, and she was being a pain in the ass. She was always chingy, chingy. Was, had some issue with me being in the gym. It's like, fuck, you live in Seattle. I live in Illinois. What the fuck? Let me the fuck alone aboard it, right? And uh, she was telling one of my buddies that... That I was hanging out with is he's he's always he's always taking a shower and brushing his teeth. He's always in the gym. It's like what the fuck cares, right? And I uh, get this nasty note like a few days later, like uh, I don't want to come in second to a sport. And I didn't respond. I fucking ripped up the letter. I fucking threw it in the garbage. I'm like this lady's a fucking. This this gal's too much drama over here. We're not even fucking. I didn't know we were dating, right? She came out. We spent the weekend together and fucking hung out and watched movies and shit and did a little bit of cardio, you know, and this other thing, she got pissed off at me, it's like, telling me how she doesn't eat, and she's complaining, she wants to get toned, this and that. it's like, fuck, well, what's your training program, like, she wasn't doing any cardio other than what she was doing with me, or, you know, she had any other guys, or whatever, but it's like, other than the sex, she wasn't doing any cardio, and the dancing, I get it, you know, dancing deja vu and the fucking poles and all this shit, right? That's good for, good, good for fucking cardio, right? But, uh, I don't know, fucking, that was just, that was a crazy night, too. I think that was the same night that that one gal comes over and fucking almost got me in fucking trouble, right? Because she comes in here and she goes, what's that? Oh, look at you, you guy. Got... Most guys come in here and look like shit. And just, you come in here and look at, look at all this and that and this. Compliment me saying I was hot and shit and whatever. But, um, you know, because they kind of, you, you, I'm, you, you don't hustle, hustle, right? Because if I can, I'm in the game too. But sometimes you are being sincere, right? So, because you tell all the women they're beautiful, but, you know, sometimes you are thinking, man, this chick really is fucking hot, right? So, but, you know, I take it with a grain of salt, right? Because you're trying to get the tips and this and that. I, you know, I'm all for it, you know? I'm listening to them. I'm enjoying the process, you know? Because them that's having to hustle, not me. So I'm enjoying them. Just listening to them, right? And then uh, she's like, can I give you the answer? I was like, no, I'm not really moved. You know, I'll give you $20, but... You know, I'm just going to kind of sit up here at front row and I need a couple more drinks. Maybe later I'll get a dance from you. But right now, I'm just, no, 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 I really want to dance for you. Fair enough. All right. So we go do that. And she freaking, she freaking takes my fucking, this was weird. She takes my hand. She freaking, and then she fucking, I don't really want to get too graphic here. But now if we got caught, caught up in it, I got no choice. But she basically is now on my finger like it's a fucking toy, right? And she's freaking writing on it. And I'm like... Bitch, you're getting me fucking trouble over here. You and yourself, you know, this is your fucking job over here. You can be more professional, just what I'm thinking, right? And this fucking, this fucking guy, about half my size, he comes over and he smacks me in the shoulder and fuck off of me, right? And he's like, I ain't doing nothing. And, uh, and she's like, he's kind of doing that to her. It's like, we just let her do her job. Actually, we're done here. You know, and I fucking, I think that was the same, and then I went over and sat on myself again. That's when that. That Asian gal, I can't remember what her name is, but I can't remember her stage name or that other gal's name. And then I don't remember her real name either. She's a nice girl, but she was too chingy chingy for me, you know, um, too controlling and shit. I didn't, I didn't like that. Anybody that gives me shit about weight training and 
it's my job. I gotta, I gotta train every day, two days on, one day off, or six on, one off, or two on. I mean, five on, two off. It's just, I have to do that. Okay. It's like as essential as the air I breathe. Okay. And if I don't, I fucking get suicidal. So that's part of my regimen. This has been since five years old. Okay. And maybe not the weight so much until high school, college, but um, everything else. You know, the working out, I've been working out since five years old. It's just, that's, that's, uh, it's mandatory for me, not optional, right? So, this gal, was like I said, it was a piece of work, so she's fucking complaining about not being told to find enough, and then not doing any of the cardio other than what she does on the fucking pool, right? On my pool, which, fucking, we only dated for a weekend, so not all that cardio there. Back in the day, I was stupid with it. I was fucking going, I would go three, four times a day, and then... But I would always catch myself. I do that for a week or two most. I'm like, I'm going to fucking cut this down. Once or twice a week. We can't be fucking doing this three, four times a day. I'm going to get fucking small. Man, I used to piss me off. Girls want to do it three, four times a day. It's too much. It's too much. Once or twice a week is plenty. Um, you know, if I really get the science down, get everything right, you know, get done. Okay, I don't mean me, let me get done. Fucking do it five, ten minutes, a.m., p.m., you know, right before the bed. And right when you wake up, and then that way you stay toned, but you don't fucking get small. Um, and then, I'm sure you have them do all the work, but sometimes that takes too long, too. They want to be up there all fucking day. It's like, come on, you know, we'll go for 30, 45 minutes, and we got to cut her off at that time, because I have shit to do. You know, um, get anabolic rest, or go get my meals in, or go get get to the gym or whatever, but I don't have time to fucking play all this slap dicking around all the time. So, you know, because sex is fine, it's cool and everything, but you can overdo it too, right? And more important things to do, you know, like getting getting ready for, for shows and get big on the off season and, and shredder on the on season. You can't be you can't be doing sex two, three or four times a day. I guess it's too much and it gets boring after a while. Um, even when the chick's hot and you, you're really into it, it's like... It, it, it's overtraining, right, for me, so it, it kills the fun, so, uh, so again, it's a third time to the same point, but I don't want to get toned and in shape and all this other shit and worry about getting too fat, so, what are your meals like, what are your macros like, what are those, I mean, explain it, right, and she's like, well, I don't eat except for maybe once or twice a day and there's small meals and it's like, you're making me do it. You don't have to yell at me, and I'm like, I'm fucking yelling at you, I'm fucking educating you over here, right? So, I mean, just from the get-go, we're off on the wrong foot, right? It's just, just too much conflict, and her not wanting to listen, and her not wanting to accept my lifestyle, and it's just like, you know, same thing I told, uh, I got kind of tired of trying to educate people with this whole thing, dating people over the years, and so, you know, by the time I got to my third fiancé, I had so much issue with fucking first and second fiancé with fucking chingy chingy about my training and all this and you know especially because back in the day I used to be kind of disrespectful I look back on it now and say that was a mistake you know because I would get mad at the girl for getting mad at me for if we had a date to the movies and I show up the more half to three quarters way through the movie it's like I wasn't done with my workout yet you know and uh and that that didn't go over too well right um but uh but then I started learning to make it sure I only made appointments I could be on time early to when it came to that whole dating thing of course kind of pissed women off a little bit so I learned that and I was still young still in college so I fixed that but but just the fact that you know women thinking down the road that I'm gonna retire uh, and not only that but like retire from the from the gym it's like that's not a retirement thing it's a lifestyle thing you know I'm not gonna stop lifting weights you forgive me I was I'm in a wheelchair and and I can't, you know what I'm talking about, wheelchair from the neck down, because if I'm waist down, I'm still still hitting arms, right? I had a buddy who went from 19 inch arms to 23 and a half inch arms after he got the wheelchair. So he improved, he got bigger, right? So, yeah, so that just pisses me off when women do that kind of bullshit. So I just, uh, yeah, I got, I got irritated with her. And so I was glad she broke up with me. I got the letters, about fucking time, ripped it up and threw it in the garbage, I'm like, God dang, we aren't even fucking deep. We haven't even had that talk yet. You know, she was there for a weekend. They talked about, you know, all this stuff. And all my buddies like, oh, yeah, she was a girlfriend. Well, it wouldn't have been nice if she, I would have went out with her. But it wouldn't have been nice if we had that talk. We didn't fucking have that talk, right? So it is what it is. So anyways, 
This has been short time. Oh yeah. So back to what I was gonna initially start about. People who die for their beliefs. So like I'm really against, you know, trying to be one of the top cocaine sellers of the world. I just think it's too I think it's too risky, right? Um, too many bad people get involved, even if you got what you think is a good organization and for the right reasons and this and that. It attracts the wrong people, it really does. I'd rather the government legalize it, tax it, put the drug dealers out of business, and freaking just let people do what they want to do and open those resources up to needle exchange. Right there at the needle exchange, you know, I'm to try to convert people, but sometimes people get. And I just wish I wasn't into this lifestyle. I really want to change. Okay, great. You know, you can continue with the lifestyle. Uh, in time, here's a pamphlet. You can go fucking... We can get you in the church or we can get you in the fucking... Which, of course, government... Um, government doesn't... Have, I'm, not, I, I'm not for religion being in government at all. You know, look at fucking Puritan times, right? I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is, you know... Make resources available. So if a church has a rehab program, here's a church that's doing a rehab program because there are people who are religious. Well, what religion is it? You tell them. Oh, what religion is non-denominational? Well, I don't deal with non-denominational shit. It's got to be Baptist. Okay, great. Well, I don't deal with particular religions. I don't like Baptists and Lutherans or Catholics. I'm non-denominational. Okay, great. They have this program. And programs that are government-funded have nothing to do with fucking um, church. There's one funded by the government. It's free through our taxpayers. Oh, I don't want to pay for that. My fucking tax dollars are da da Well, you know what? Your tax dollars are going for the war against drugs, okay? And you know how that goes. Everybody's paid off both sides of the border. You know, you get a lot of corruption. You get a lot of people fucking manipulated and, and compromised. So, you know, um, and as long as, no matter, you can make it fucking death on the spot for some of these guys. Some of these guys are so hardcore. You can't threaten them with jail. And fucking the ones that are hardcore, the guys are really into it. You, like the hardcore bodybuilders, you can't talk them out of that lifestyle, right? That are into it and think they're doing it for the right reasons. Because they're already watching their backs because they're, they're already killing each other, right? This drug lord trying to take over that lord's business or they're, they're trying to fight over territory. So saying, okay, we're just going to bust you on the spot. We're going to kill you. It's not going to scare people, okay? No, uh, not the hardcore guys, okay? And they're so organized and smart, and they got all this stuff figured out, and it's just like, you know, that's what I'm saying. The best route is to, you know, legalize it, tax it, you know, and not make people have excuses for, well, I only committed this crime because I was on drugs. I ain't going to fly. It ain't gonna fly because it's just like saying, well, I was drunk, so it doesn't count. You're damn right it counts. And if, and if you feel like the, the, the alcohol caused you to make a bad judgment call and you committed a crime where you don't think you would have committed another crime on alcohol, well, guess what? Do your time for the do your time for the crime. If it was a victim crime, non-victim crime, pay your fine. Do your couple of days in jail if that even comes to that, or slap on the wrist, and then fucking quit drinking, right? Same with drugs. To quit doing the drugs if you can't do it by yourself. Get into rehab. That's why I think these rehabs, um, government-funded programs, would be phen phenomenal. And needle exchange program, right? Exchange it out. Even if you're going to charge them for the needles and you don't want to use the tax dollars for that. There are some dr drug addicts who don't don't have money and they, every little thing they pull off and everything, if they have two extra dollars for needles instead of doing the needles they'll, they'll buy like little extra drugs are just not right in the head okay but there are people who are who are enough in in the mindset that they won't take certain chances meaning if they have the opportunity to have clean needles they'll do it so you think that oh, they just hurt themselves no because then they go and infect other people fair enough the AIDS virus and different types of sexually transmitted diseases and that you know, stuff can be transmitted sexually and sometimes Good people will date drug addicts, fair enough, and that drug addict might sexually transmit a disease to somebody else. That's why you always want to use safe sex and safe needle practices and safe drug practices if you're going to be involved in that lifestyle. Be responsible about it. And there's a lot of drug, drug addicts who are not. And uh, it's not because they're bad people. They are putting their lives at, at risk and they're just not thinking about the consequences. They're not in the right frame of mind. Again, they're not bad people for taking the drugs. They're not even bad people for making poor choices. It's just like people who get 
make stupid decisions that get too horny and they don't slap on a fucking condom, right? They don't strap up. They don't tarp up. They just freaking go and it's, it's an easy thing to do and it just takes one time to slip up, right? And you can do things right and the condom can pop open. There's just, there is no safe sex. There's safer sex. There's safer ways to do drugs. Um, I hate to even say it like that because people will sometimes do that and you say, oh, they kind of got under control and you keep watching them, you keep watching and all of a sudden they're off in, in Pluto and Uranus and their anus and all of everything else and then they, they don't know what the fuck and they got no veins to shoot in because they've gone from, from, uh, from smoking to sniffing to fucking injecting and it gets ugly, it gets very ugly but my point is Take responsibility for your actions and um, always give the peer person an opportunity to change if they hit rock bottom or there's still hope for them. Because there are people who have fucking hit a 180 and here's something that you can uh, identify with if you've got an addictive personality. And if you don't, I'm going to educate you right now. If you don't have any people that with a fucking addictive personality can be fucking some life changing motherfuckers. There are people who get off of those fucking drugs and that fucking, they flip that 180 and they use their creative mind if it's not too burned out from the drugs, right? Because, oh, that person's brain dead almost because they burned their drugs. There are people that have had, hey, you're absolutely right, there are people who have burned and fried their brains. But just because they have doesn't always mean that they're going to have a burned out brain, right? So if they still have, those neurons are still firing, they're still pretty sharp. They turn their lives around, guess what? They might change the world. They might have a vaccine that fucking cures cancer, AIDS, coronavirus, whatever the fuck. Or only man fucking, that's phenomenal. That person was worth saving, right? That one starfish, right? The jump here. So, his mom, you're not going to save all of them. You can't save the whole world. There's uh, thousands of starfish out here. You can't save all of them. And one of them was prettier than all the rest. And he's like, well, I saved this one, Mommy. Threw it back in. And he's already done ten more before that. Well, it's got a ripple effect, right? What about... What about starfish had our capability where the starfish could come back out later and start to us another starfish in? One starfish does that. Three starfish does that. Okay. Starfish can't do that, right? But human beings can, right? So what about these motherfuckers that had a little bit of help? What about the ones that decide to come back and help others? You see the ripple effect there? You throw the ripples in the water, it has an effect. That's, that's a classic example. Don't give up on people. Just because they have bad habits, it doesn't make them a bad person. Okay? If they're a good person deep down and make them poor decisions, just be there for them when they be their rock. You know, when they hit the rock bottom, they need an anchor to pull into. If you know, you can trust them, you know, um, to where the only thing that you have to worry about is if they relapse. Now, if you worry about them stealing from you and shit, you got to have precautions in there, right? You got to send them to a rehab center because they can't steal from you. Or you got to have all your shit locked up enough to where if anything is gone and pawned off, you're not missing it, okay? And can you... Okay, this is an old TV. It's a test. If you fucking... A little bit of jewelry that I was thinking about donating anyways. If this is gone, you don't miss it. You set that up as a trap. You don't entice them with it, of course. You know, and try and get them to do it. But, I mean, if that's what happens, and then, okay, great. They didn't pass the test. You know, at least you didn't leave your, you know, $5,000, you know, toy outside with the key still in it or something. You put a down payment on, still a little 20 grand on, right? And they go out and wreck it. Okay? Uh, or worse, you had to have the motherfucker pay it off. You pay off a $50,000 fucking Mustang GT fucking Shelby or some motherfucking shit. And they fucking go and sell it on you. Ooh, you're gonna be mad, right? Um, so don't put yourself in those types of predicaments, right? And if it's your son or daughter or anything anyways, I hate to say it, yeah, I'd be mad. But to go back and go, oh, I should have never given him a chance and da 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 I, I would risk that with my son. I would, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't have beat myself up about it, you know. Other than, damn it, I should have had a little bit better security into in, in in place. 
you know, but my son's a lot worth a lot more than a $50,000 toy, right? And if I can afford a $50,000 toy, I'm probably not, uh, I'm probably not hurting for money. And I'm going to probably flip a few more thousand dollars and, and force them into rehab before I give them another chance to uh, come back and live with me. Um, because I want to, I, I would want my son to get better, right? I don't give a damn about material things. I care about my fucking kids, okay? Um, I can take the bus, I can drive a fucking, if the car works, I don't care if it's a $2,000 or a $5,000 car, if it gets me from point A to point B, okay? I'm not worried about that bullshit, okay? Just need it for the essential stuff. All right, guys, it's been showtime. Showtime Shredded Fitness over here. Size, growth, get big. I'm, it's like doing cardio in here. I'm fucking sweating. I gotta take a shower now. That's what happens when you don't have any uh, air conditioning, guys. Take care and God bless.